before I bring the next man, what ta- there we go. Before I bring the next man up to the stage, I want to point out Jack Chick right there. Jack Chick. Yeah. You know him. You love him. And at least one of you in this room has fucked him. Everyone look around. Everyone look around. Somebody. Uh, as you might have seen from myself, from Stog, from these lovely people right here, from a couple of us, uh, we have these shirts, uh, internet <laughs> team jerseys. If you are interested in one of these shirts, you can find Jack Chick. You can either give him $20 cash or you can give him your credit card and, you know, trust that he will charge the correct amount. I don't know. I mean, you tell me if that face looks trustworthy or not. And Jack Chick has informed me that he will give me the money that he's informed me that he'll give me back the money that you make. What? Ooh, I don't know if I buy that, actually. Yeah, you do. Okay. Oh, no, you're right. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Anyway, if you're looking for T-shirts, uh, you need to contact Jack Chick. If you're looking for stickers... You need to contact the Uber driver that I fucking lost all of the stickers in last night. Like, like, like $120 worth of stickers. We were so drunk last night, you guys. I don't know, maybe we'll get him back. Anyway, we've got shirts, 20 bucks a pop. Uh, but coming up next to the stage, his name is J.W. Friedman. <laughs> J.W. Friedman is a professional rapper, and that is why you are about to hear fan fiction about the Wu-Tang Clan. J.W. Friedman. Hello. I wasn't gonna give it away, but uh, there's there's maybe a few few more elements in here you may not expect. Um, please remember, I did not write this. Hey, I'm from San Francisco. This may get me kicked out of the city. Um, all right. <clears throat> Miranda climbed to the top of the fire escape to a condemned building Mr. Hughes had described in an email to her. Her eyes were red from the crying on the way over. She knew that going in distracted or emotional, conflicted, was a bad idea, but she needed something to distract her with, from her fight with Raphael and Leonardo. She, <laughs> she reached the top and was surprised to see someone else was there. Who are you? Where's Mr. Hughes? Miranda said. <laughs> Yet yeah, the Ninja Turtles are in this too. <laughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, who are you? Where's Mr. Hughes? Miranda said. <clears throat> he was caught up in a meeting, so he sent me. My name is Wesley. I'm Mr. Hughes' private bodyguard. I was the one who spied on your meeting a week ago with a sniper rifle aimed at you. <laughs> Wesley said matter-of-factly. Huh, you got good eyes, Miranda said, slowly walking up to him as he pulled out a pack of cigarettes from his pocket and held them up to her calmly. Don't mind if I do, Miranda said, accepting one and putting it between her lips as she lit it up and deeply inhaled. That is how cigarettes work. Uh. <laughs> so, how did Mr. Hughes... Oh, sorry. So, how did Mr. Hughes buy you? I was being held in a Chinese prison for nearly ten years before Mr. Hughes bought my freedom and he employed me to handle his dirty work, Wesley said calmly. Miranda looked at him as she inhaled the cigarette again. Once again, that's how they work. Considering the night she was having, she needed this cigarette badly. Huh, looks like your boss has a good eye for talent, Miranda said. She started to feel her lack faux sleep coming over her. She willed herself to stay awake. Well, I've got good eyes for beautiful women, Wesley said. Miranda rolled her eyes. Please, I've had a rough night. I'm in no mood for flirting. Just tell me where I can find the Wu-Tang Clan's headquarters. <laughs> Miranda said in a... There's so in many a, chambers. <laughs> Miranda said in a low tone as she inhaled the remainder of the cigarette. Of course. Their headquarters change all the time, but their main base of operations is someplace called the 36th Chamber. 
Here, this file should tell you all you need to know, Wesley said, handing a manila folder to Miranda. Miranda took it from him. Thanks. She turned around and began to flip through the rather thin folder. Flicking the cigarette to the side, she looked through it to find nothing but a few sheets of paper that said, Surprise! <laughs> Is this some kind of joke? No, but you probably won't be laughing soon, Wesley said as Miranda felt the pangs of drowsiness again and she found she couldn't fight it. She dropped the folder and all of the dummy papers and she began to feel disoriented. She tried to eke herself standing, but she felt as though her body was getting heavier and heavier. She stumbled around for a bit, placing her hand on her head as she groaned. What did you do to me? Miranda slurred as she felt her knees close to the cigarette butt she had flicked to the side as she grabbed it in her fingers and examined it closely despite her vision starting to blur. Son of a bitch! You drugged me! You know, smoking is bad for you. <laughs> Wesley said darkly. As Miranda's dizziness began to worsen, her vision blurred as she saw several killer bees looping onto the roof as Wesley walked over to her. He grabbed her hair and held her up to his face. Fuck Mr. Hughes, Wu-Tang forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> scene change. Uh. Miranda eventually felt her mind finally waking up as she slowly began to open her eyes, giving a soft groan as her vision slowly returned as she rose her head. She was sitting down, she could tell that much. The blurriness in her vision subsided as she looked at her location. She was inside some small room that was no bigger than a bedroom, though without a bed. The walls had some sort of red-painted flocks of birds that seemed to try to fly around the room. In the dead center was a large yellow bird, the symbol of the Wu-Tang Clan. No, it's fucking not. That's a W. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. All right. We're, we're on a tight schedule here. We'll have to keep that to the end. Um, Miranda then looked to her left and saw a man looking through her things, looking at her jacket and her sword. Sorry, I apologize in advance. Here. Oh my God! <laughs> you never want to hear that in the show. Aha! You're finally awake. He said. He stepped into the light as Miranda felt horror shoot through her nerves as she immediately recognized this man from the photographs of Wu Tang, Charles and Schoner. Oh. Old dirty bastard, Miranda growled softly as he grinned, showing his disgusting teeth. So you have heard of me. Good, the old dirty bastard said. He moved close to Miranda. His stench was horrid. Miranda could have gagged as he smelled her neck. Mmm, I love your smell. The smell of virgin flesh. He moved back as he licked her lips. I can remedy that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, Miranda shouted as he forced his tongue into her mouth. This is awful, but it stopped soon, I promise. Oh, God, it was disgusting and slimy. She was ready to bark, but she wasn't going to let handcuffs stop her. She groaned in disgust before she bit down on the intruder's tongue, making him let go of her head as he yelled out in pain. Ooh, the old dirty bastard said with his tongue out of his mouth. He looked at her in shock. Clearly no one had ever tried that when he forced himself upon them. Anger grew in his eyes as he drew a knife and held it up to his, her neck. I'll piss you with... <laughs> oh, Cyrus! A voice called from behind as the old dirty bastard stopped. Standing in the doorway stood a figure with a dark robe, the Wu-Tang Bird. No. All across his chest and of the robe, though the wings spread to the side and the tips reached to the bottom of the robe. Mathful Rizzle, he bit my tongue, the old dirty bastard said while his injured tongue hang out. Rizza, spelled R-I-Z-Z-A. <laughs> Entered the room, followed by three young people, said people looking as though they were barely 14, bearing the Wu-Tang symbol recently tattooed on their chest, and quite recently from the look of it. Wait, does 14 year olds like Wu-Tang Clan at all? Does that, does that resonate with that mark? <laughs> um, yeah, sure, it's 2015, why not? <laughs> Ugh, Rizza just waved his hand for the old dirty bastard to leave as he indeed did so, looking back at Miranda with a hateful look before leaving. Miranda stared up at this mystery man. He slowly turned to the table and picked up a clean towel and a bottle of sake as he returned to Miranda, bending down his knees as he looked Miranda in the eye. If you're gonna kill me, you better do it now, Miranda said. Kill you, dear child? Goodness, no. You are much too valuable to just kill, Riza said softly, but with power and weight in his words. It felt as though his words were trying to work their way into her head to get her to trust him. I get that a lot, My Usually my response is the same, Miranda said. Well, we aren't like the others. We have a more honorable intention to our methods, Riza said calmly, standing up as he slowly walked back to the table to lay the towel on it. 
You call rape and pillage of an entire country honorable, Miranda said, what? keeping her eyes on Riza for anything. What? He was trying to grab something. When did this happen? Wait, guys, seriously, this is when it gets good. <laughs> The world is filled with anger, greed, lies, hatred, and unnatural children who are born with diseases that destroy their ability to think. The medical world comes up with all these names for these diseases or disorders. Schizophrenia, autism, Down syndrome, OCD. All these diseases that hinder the mind and destroy order. The portion of your country and in arms wants to help these people. But do you know what that does? It wastes valuable resources. <laughs> That's bullshit. Disorders aren't diseases, Miranda began to say before the RZA cut her off. Then how else would you call these horrible diseases of mankind? Lust, greed, wrath? Are you to tell me that they're disorders we cannot cure? RZA turned back to her as he walked to the other side calmly while talking. You can't compare mankind's sins to people with developmental disabilities, Miranda said angrily. <laughs> She wished she had the strength to break out of these handcuffs so she could get her hands around Riz's neck. She had worked with many people who had developmental disorders, and while many of them had to be taken away to institutes, leaving their children in foster care, she found, she found more of these developmental people were just fine if they were given proper help from their peers to help them understand right from wrong. This is... I told you, this will get me kicked out of San Francisco. Uh, you don't quite see it, do you? These disorders are the punishments God placed upon the world for its sins. But that's where my man and the killer bees will change that. He walked back over to Miranda, bent down and put his hands on the side of her arms as he stared at her with those haunting eyes. You are the most promising warrior I've ever had the pleasure to hear such tales from the killer bees. Join me with our combined strength. We can take control of the country's financial heart and begin the cleansing. We will reform the world and all of mankind's sins will be eradicated forever. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. I edited out the part where they said Master Riza had great English for an Asian man, which is just <laughs> wrong on so many levels here. Um, I'd rather go to hell than kill innocent people who can't help that they are the way they are, Miranda said darkly and angrily. Riz aside as White spit off his face and stood up. Then you have chosen your end. Riza turned around as the youth began to speak up excitedly. I'm not sure. <laughs> Should I go there? Should I go there? This is pretty raunchy. Um, you already did eugenics. Are you all right. Riz, what, like, what's the next all right. This is, audience, this is audience participation. You might notice. <laughs> Feel free to chime in. Master Riza, what are you going to do to her? I'm, I'm just going to change the gender so I'm more comfortable with this. Master Rizzo, what are you going to do to him? One you said, I have a suggestion, Master. We could tie him to a bedpost with his ass cheeks spread out and shit, right? And we'll put a hanger on a stove and let it sit there for 30 minutes and then just stick that shit in. Awesome. Somebody knows it. The second youth excitedly suggested, making the other two youths laugh while the Rizzo stood there, his hands together as he listened to these two ramble to one another. Oh, wait, wait, I'll fucking, I'll fucking lay his balls on a dresser and then I'll ram him with a spike baseball bat. Blow! The third youth said. Behind them stood Master Giza. He was too was laughing at these pathetic suggestions. I'll pull a tongue out and stab it with a rusty screwdriver. I'll hang him over the side of a building by his ball. I'll just fucking sew his asshole clothes and then keep feeding him and feeding him and feeding him. All right, thank you. Boys, Riza finally spoke up to get them to stop as Giza entered the room to face Riza. What do you want us to do with her, brother? Giza, G-I-Z-Z-A, said calmly. Riza looked back to Miranda, who continued to stare at him with hatred in his eyes. She wasn't going to change her mind, obviously. Riza said something to, to Giza. I... It's Giza, but it's spelled Giza, so Giza, that Miranda couldn't quite hear before she eventually left the room. Giza just smiled darkly as he walked over to the table and picked up her sword, pulling it out of its sheath as he walked over to Miranda, inspecting the sword. Mm, this is a fine sword, I'll be plowed, proud to claim it as my own, Giza said with a grin, as the last thing Miranda saw was Giza use the handle of her own sword to walk her out, knock her out. Eventually, Miranda awoke in darkness. She leaned her head up only to ram her head against something solid. She leaned her head back as she groaned as she tried to put a hand to her head, but she found that she was taking her other hand with her. What? <laughs> her wrist felt the familiar cold metal of handcuffs on her wrists. 
She eventually recovered from the pain and she realized she couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. She tried to move her legs but found she had limited mobility. She couldn't really bend her legs without hitting the low ceiling. She placed her hands on the ceiling and felt wood as she heard a bit of creaking. No, they didn't, Miranda said to herself, trying to tell herself this was just a dream, but the pain she was feeling in her head from the Wu-Tang Clan and the smell of earth was confirming the worst. Oh God, they did. Miranda had been buried alive. One more, one more, one more, one more. Fuck it. 